data centre we're using dynamic UPSs. One of the issues we've uh, we've learned from Texas DC One is that the use of batteries has been quite uh, quite difficult. It's not it, it's a well known, well tested technology, but every time you get a, a utility outage, it can be a very short utility outage, typically less than two seconds. But every time you do that, your critical IT load is picked up by the batteries in the UPS. What that means is that you take a, a drop in the power that's stored in those batteries. As soon as your utility power comes back on, as I say, it can be a very short drop, um, you charge those batteries up again. And as you know from uh, sort of your, your home torch and everything like that, Every time you, you uh, recharge a battery, you actually lower the capacity of that battery. So we get something called battery hardening. Um, and what that means is the battery doesn't actually make the full life that the manufacturers will guarantee it for. So we're changing our batteries more, more frequently than we'd need to. Obviously, um, lead acid batteries nowadays are recycled, so it's not a total loss, but a greener technology is to use a dynamic UPS. So this is our dynamic UPS installation. What we have here, this is a diesel motor. This drives the flywheel. The way the system works, we have a large flywheel which rotates at around about 3,000 RPM. And then we have a clutch, an electromagnetic clutch here. So when we have a normal utility feed onto the building, that will drive this flywheel. It's a very small charge that goes into the flywheel, just keeps it spinning. If we lose that utility feed, the first thing that happens is the flywheel then becomes a dynamo and that's the dynamo part of the machine. So the flywheel will turn, it will operate the dynamo, that'll generate 480 volts at 60 hertz, and that'll pick up our IT load. So what we're doing here, we're doing away with the batteries that would normally pick up that load. If it's a very short utility failure, up to around about two seconds, then the utility feed will come on, it'll carry on driving the flywheel, we'll take the utility feed back onto the IT load. If it's a prolonged outage, then what'll happen is the motor will start, the diesel engine will start. That will then drive through the electromagnetic clutch to start driving the flywheel and driving the dynamo to pick up the load. In the event that the, the diesel engine doesn't start, then what we'll do, we'll actually drop the electromagnetic clutch and it's like jump-starting an engine. So the flywheel will then turn the diesel engine and that'll actually start it up. So we don't have any failures on startup. If the battery's dead or whatever, when we start up, we use this as a jump start. So we come through the system. As I say, this part is the actual stator alternator. It generates up to 480 volts at 60 hertz. You can see here, as we go across to this one, the connections are actually open, substantial power connections. They then feed across into the switching gear. And this is our switching gear for the UPS. Interesting feature here, we use what's called infrared windows so that um, rather than having to open the high voltage doors when you have to use arc flash equipment and that sort of thing, we actually open the infrared window, we put an infrared camera on there, we can immediately see if there's any issues with these connections or with the um, breakers on the other side. So they'll show up considerably hotter than what they should be. We then know we've got a problem, we can get the arc flash gear on, actually open it up properly and deal with that problem before it becomes a failure.